community, at least from our limited experience, which is a few years now building a conference, is is really built when you make it about the community and not about yourself. And so what I mean by that is is the decisions that Dan and I made, uh, my business partner and I made, we, we, we decided from the very beginning we would not purposely, we would not be the figureheads of podcast movement. We would not put our faces on all the logos and we would not take the stage at our own event and speak. You know, there's a temptation to do that uh, mm. depending on what your goals are and what you're creating. Uh, but for us, we didn't do that. We believe that if it's true, if it's really about community, it can't be about us. And, and so we made that decision. And I think what's wonderful about that decision now, you know, being that we're going into our seventh event this next year, our seventh year, is the things that people would want from being on stage or from uh, having their face on the logo are, are things that now organically occur, but they occur for the right reasons. And, and I, I think um, what that means is people look at podcast movement and they say, this is a successful event. This event's growing. Uh, this event has some buzz. This event is attracting certain types of podcasters and certain types of organizations and uh, why is that happening? And mm. when the question of why is that happening is brought up, right or wrong, it points to, well, who's putting this together? Mm. And when that question comes up, that's where uh, my name might come up, or that's where Dan's name definitely comes up. Uh, we're a team, you know, I, I couldn't do any of this without our team. Um, mm. There's no way I could do all this by myself. I wouldn't even try. So, uh, but now that's, that's really exciting is, uh, delayed gratification, I guess, is the way to put mm. it. And not that I'm looking for gratification, but, uh, you know, the, that question's asked and people want to talk and like this podcast, they want to hear um, some of the stories. And mm. and I think one of the big reasons for that is because um, we really made an effort in the beginning not to try to make it about us and, and try to genuinely make it about community, mm. uh, which resulted in uh, an op opportunity for true community to actually mm. grow and, and we're still learning how to grow community. You know, we got some initiatives we're putting in place this year to, to continue to foster that and grow that. And, um, but yeah, that, that's, that's a lot of stuff I just talked about. I yeah. hope I didn't make it too much, <laughs> no, but, not uh, really but, no, but yeah, awesome, that's, no, no. that's, uh, that's what we believe. We believe, you know, in, in, in representing as many people and as many voices as we can. And, uh, the less we make it about ourselves, the more, we seem to, to see progress. <laughs> so, uh, we'll keep it's, you know, it sounds that. like, it sounds like you definitely got your dad in you as well. Like just giving yeah. more than you receiving and, and just, um, you know, and, and that's, that's why it's become so successful as well is that you, you're doing this from a sort of a humble position and, uh, yeah, it's super inspiring. Seriously, that, that there's so much in there, like just to, just to unpack, you know, and, and we'll definitely be doing that after, well, after the show as well. But it's, it's really, really fascinating what you've done and, and, and really you. inspiring, you know, and, and so, and you can, and I can imagine your culture, um, as you mentioned, like would be representative of, of, of that as well, which is what well, must be a great place to be working. Are, are the other, like, uh, is there any other sort of advice for you when you sort of cultivating a community um, in the beginning uh, that you could give to our listeners or, you know, anyone trying to build a community, what, so what were some of the other sort of challenges and, and maybe some advice around that? Uh, well, well, we'll just kind of go back to the point mentioned, but, but to kind of dig in on, on it a little bit deeper is mm. when, when you're by yourself and, and you're wanting to do something that you feel compelled to do, the temptation is to wave your arms and maybe stand on a soapbox and, and say, look at me, look at me. And in most cases, when you're waving your arm saying, look at me, nobody will look at you. <laughs> they won't mm. really care. Uh, but what people do look at is, um, is an army. If an army marches through a town, they, they see this army. And, and so then the question could be, how, how do you create an army? And, 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 and thinking about that and, and practicing, you know, some different ideas, you know, based on that question, a couple of things that came up is, is one of them is um, what I call being the noticer uh, is starting out by saying, okay, who, who's my, my audience or who's my, um, my target client or uh, who's the person I want to read my book or the person I want to listen to my podcast or whatever it is. 
and, and how can you first start by noticing them rather than saying, notice me. And that may be as simple as making a list of two or three people or five people and saying, okay, I'm going to comment on their social media or I'm going to, you know, genuinely find ways to notice them, not in a contrived or a, a gimmicky way, but just a sincere way of, of noticing and, and being appreciative. And like I said, you can like their social media post or you can uh, leave a review on their podcast or you can, um, you know, comment on their blog or share their blog and tag them in a tweet or, or whatever it is, finding unique ways to notice. And what typically happens when you, when you do that is I eventually start to, to look and see, man, that, that Craig guy, Gareth, he, these guys are really nice guys, you know, like, like, I don't care what, I don't care what the internet says about them. They're good people. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what, what's happening when you're doing that is you're creating rapport with someone and, and rapport oftentimes when it's genuine and sincere rapport will yield reciprocity. So you, you start out saying, uh, I'm going to notice someone else. I'm going to be sincere in that. That creates a rapport the rapport will create reciprocity. So when it's your turn to come out with that book or launch that podcast or grow whatever idea you're wanting to grow and you say to someone that you're, you know, practicing this, this noticing uh, exercise with, you say to them, well, you know, here's something that I'm working on. In many cases, they're going to say, well, I really like this person. I want to support them. I want to tell people mm -hmm. about what they're doing. And you didn't force that. Um, but they want to do it. And the reason they want to do it is because you've kind of hooked them up first uh, in, a, in a genuine way. So if that's compounded over time where you're noticing people, uh, more than five people, 10, maybe it's 15, maybe it's 20, uh, whatever that number is, but, but, but you're doing it again in a sincere way. Uh, eventually enough people are raising their hand saying, we really like this or we really like mm. this person and that's that's called the army that's called building the army so i hope i didn't take too long explaining that but i mm. i think for the person that's saying look at me instead of saying look at me saying how do i notice others how do i build that rapport with them in a sincere way because that rapport will create that reciprocity and when that's compounded reciprocity creates an army and people notice an army so if you want to get noticed you got to start by noticing others mm. But I totally love that. It's such yeah. great advice, seriously. And it's like, it's not the advice you would expect to hear. You know, someone said like, you know, this is how you build a community. Like, it's and, and not it's, a quick, quick uh, yeah, fix. Unfortunately, I wish, I wish I had a quick solution. Um, yeah, but, yeah. But, but, yeah, but, but I think the, the lesson is also that nothing is actually quick. In, you know, it, it takes that <laughs> effort to, um, to grow something. And, and, and yeah, wow. That's, so, so really thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah. And also I was just wondering, like, uh, you actually, uh, have had your mom on your podcast and you interviewed her recently, <laughs> <laughs> which, which I think is so cool. And, um, also so important though, you know what I mean? Like, because you, you grow up with this lady, but you don't necessarily maybe know her that well. Like, you know, I guess not, I'm not just saying you and her, but like all of us in general. So what do you think is the say, importance of doing that and, uh, you know, for people to tell their story? <laughs> well, my mom had some stories I had not ever heard that were on that podcast. And my, my daughter listened to that podcast. And, and in that particular podcast, my mom talked about growing up um, basically in a, you know, kind of a small poor town in Mississippi and, and they didn't have electricity or running water. They had well water and they had outhouses, wow. which is something that like most of us can't even fathom uh, <laughs> at this day and age. And so my daughter was asking questions about that. Like what's an outhouse and what is, you know, how do you, how does that even work? And, 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 you know, that was kind of funny, but yeah, that, that was a fun episode. And I, I did get a lot of feedback from that episode. That's and awesome. what's funny is when my mom came to podcast movement this year, um, she met a number of people there and they, uh, there were a number of people said, I, I heard your episode <laughs> you know? and, and then that was hilarious because she's, she's so new to this, like her just getting on that microphone. She didn't realize people were actually listening to that. <laughs> you know? and so for her to meet people that, you know, were, were saying, I love the story that you told about whatever. So it's just surreal for her. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was a fun thing. And I, I think, um, Maybe the takeaway is that, yeah, it's cool to, uh, to interview your loved ones every now and then uh, if you have a podcast because you can share a little bit about them and kind of incorporate them into what you're doing and it makes them more excited about it as well. Kind of gives them a, a different view of, 
the different projects that you're passionate about. So there's, there's a lot of good things that can come from it. And hey, yeah, like I've got a Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy Cape Fold mountain range. Gotta be quick, so.